Brothers and sisters, Allah Azza wa Jal has set measures and fixed rules by which this universe runs. And based on this or on these rules, Allah Azza wa Jal established a system according to these rules. So a wise person should coincide with the rules of Allah and live his life in accordance to them and not try to challenge them and go against them and clash. One very important rule is al jaza'u min jinsi al-amal. One will face the consequence of his deeds. The consequence of the deeds coincide with the deeds. Or like they say, you reap what you sow. And there are many verses and many prophetic narrations confirming this. In the Quran, after Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Ar Rahman mentioned the reward of the highest class of people in Jannah, he said, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ Is there any reward for goodness other than goodness? And on the other hand, after Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in Surah Amma, the punishment for the disbelievers and the disobedient. He said, Jaza'an wifaqa. About the punishment. He said, Jaza'an wifaqa. A recompense coinciding with their evil deeds. As for the Narrations in the Sunnah, then they are more than one can list. But for example, in the books of Al Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet said that Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, says, Yabna Adam, anfiq unfiq alayk. O son of Adam, you spend and I will spend on you. The deed is spending, the recompense is that Allah will spend with the massive difference between what we can provide and what we expect from Allah Azza wa Jal to provide us with. Now on the other hand, the warning of those who don't spend is also in the, Bukhari, in, in book, uh, books of the Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu said, every new sunrise, two angels descend. One of them say, Allahumma a'ti mumsikan talafa. Oh Allah, ruin or destroy the wealth of the one who holds back. And as the Prophet ﷺ in this regard told Asma' bin to Abi Bakr, Ya Asma'u, anfiqi, wa la tuki, fayuka alayki, aw yuka anki. Oh, Asma, spend and don't hold back, otherwise Allah will hold back. With regards to mentioning Allah Azza wa Jal, Al-Bukhari and Muslim report that Allah Azza wa Jal says, again, a Qudsi narration, 
about mentioning Allah. He said, when the slave mentions me to himself, I will mention him to myself. And if he mentions me in an assembly, I will mention him in an assembly better than his, meaning the angels. Dealing with people, there are different narrations. For example, and this is a very encouraging narration. Al-Bukhari and Muslim report that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever strives to fulfill the needs of his brother, this is the deed. Allah will fulfill his needs. This is the recompense coinciding. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Whoever relieves a believer, a Muslim, through a hardship, Allah Azza wa Jal will relieve him from one of the hardships on the Day of Judgment. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, all of this is in Bukhari and Muslim. Whoever conceals the fault of his fellow Muslim, Allah will conceal his faults on the Day of Judgment. Jaza'an yuwafiqu al-amal. Al-jaza'u min jinsi al-amal. You reap what you saw. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Muslim, Allah Azza wa Jal will punish on the Day of Judgment those who punish people in this life. The choice is ours. What kind of recompense we want from Allah Azza wa Jal, we decide that. أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وبعد There are many examples in Islamic history proven this rule For example as reported by a Tirmidhi and classified as authentic by Al-Albani Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, one of the pioneers in Islam, one of the first few people who accepted the call of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the brother of Ali radiallahu anhu. In the battle of Mu'ta, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if Zayd ibn Harith was to, be, to get killed, then Ja'far ibn Abi Talib is to take the leadership of the army, of the Muslim army. So Zayd was killed, was martyred, radiallahu anhu. And who took the banner of the Muslims, of the Muslim army? Ja'far, radiallahu anhu. He held it with his right hand and was fighting the battle. So they cut his hand. So he held it with the left hand and continued because with the fall of the banner, or the fall of the banner in the army was a sign that the army is defeated. So they cut his other hand. So he held the banner like this to his chest until he was martyred. Anhu. So he gave his arms for the sake of Allah. What's the recompense? The Prophet ﷺ said in the narration, I saw Ja'far ibn Abi Talib flying in Jannah with Jibreel and Mikael having two wings, replacing his arms, radiallahu anhu. Another astonishing example is a female companion. Again, one of the first few who embraced Islam with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And one of the seven slaves whom Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu bought and set free for the sake of Allah. Zinnira to Rumania, our Rumia. Zinnira was a female slave, a Roman female slave owned by a tribe from Quraysh. 
When she heard the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she couldn't wait. And she immediately embraced Islam and accepted the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So her master, the woman, the woman who owned her from Quraysh, started torturing that woman, radiallahu anha. And she used a, a very uh, vulgar way of torture. She would hit her on the head continuously and would collect other female slaves and command them to continue striking her head until Zinira radiallahu anha lost her sight. She became blind. And they continued to torture her. And whenever she became thirsty and would ask for water, they would mock her and say, it's right in front of you, just walk and you'll get it. And she would stumble and fall. And they would laugh. After a while, her owner said to her, if the God whom you're claiming to be a God is true, call upon him and let him bring back your sight. She said, indeed, he is true. Allahumma rudda alayya basari. Oh Allah, bring back my sight to me. Instantly, her sight was back. As for her master, Allah Azza wa Jal afflicted her with a disease in her head. A pain, a severe pain in the head that would not subside until she struck on her head. So she would command these female slaves to strike her on her head until she lost her sight. Al jaza'u min jinsi al You reap what you sow. Brothers and sisters, if we keep this rule in mind, if it's always attentive in our minds and we act upon it, it will certainly be a motivator for us to do good, expecting the recompense of that good. And it will certainly prevent us from committing any evil, any oppression against others. A person who's working for the sake of Allah, when he's faced with obstacles or people who oppress him, when he remembers this, he will be reassured that his patience for striving in the path of calling to Allah is not going to go to waste. And that those who are wronging him, oppressing him, torturing him, imprisoning him, will not be left unpunished. We need to have this rule part of our daily lives. And when we do, trust me brothers and sisters, our lives will change. We ask Allah Azza wa to bless us, to be in accordance to what He wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala.